got a whole bunch of random stuff here, but let's get this YouTube video started. Uh, today I have a Yamaha Natural Sound Stereo Control Amplifier C85 top of the line 1986 pre-amplifier. This thing is skookum as frig. It has a whole bunch of cool inputs. It's got a nice volume knob as well as loudness control for nice easy listening. And under the hood we have a parametric EQ. You know what that means? That means you can adjust the lows, you can adjust the highs, and you can also adjust the, the, the bell of the sound, so the width, so you can have a nice narrow uh, sound or a nice fat sound. So you can really tune into what you really need. Uh, this thing is absolutely fucked. It does not work at all. It makes a whole bunch of noise. On the back here, you know, we can see a few of these inputs are already damaged. It's got some plugs here. Not sure what those are for. And this is our primary output. And every now and again, it starts to make a horrible noise. So it just does not work at all. Anyways, you know the drill. Let's get this thing chopped open and let's get this fixed. So pretty basic. There are some screws in the bottom of this box as well as one on the back. So I just pulled those out really quickly and uh, let's get this thing uncovered. A uh, little tight around the edges, but you know, it, it does come off. Uh, you can already see all the stuff inside here and, and just, wow, you know, they do not make electronics like this anymore. You can see all the capacitors in here, a whole bunch of weird connectors I've never seen before. Anyways, let's zoom in for a closer look. Um, here under the hood, you can see the potentiometers for the parametric EQ. So you see there's two potentiometers in line with each other. So you kind of have two shafts, uh, you know, axially connected. So you're able to rotate the inner pot with one of the knobs and the outer pot with the other knob. A couple buttons here and then the switches, which are connected to these blue ribbon cables. Uh, really well built, but never really seen anything like this. Um, so I'm going to pull out my Fluke multimeter here and I'm just going to measure the resistance of these uh, output terminals, so just RCA outputs. Uh, I, I don't really know what I'm looking for here, but I'm just kind of doing some troubleshooting. So this amplifier has the same problem you usually see with old Apple headphones where they work when you're holding them a certain orientation, but as soon as you move them you hear nothing. Uh, in my case, the sound comes out fine, but the minute something is moved in the back where the RCA connectors are, it starts making a horrible screeching sound. So the multimeter is showing me zero ohms from the you know ground terminal to the outside of the RCA connector, and about 2.2 kilo ohms from the inside of the RCA to its input, which uh, you know seems pretty standard. Um, you know, here as I'm measuring these connectors, I notice that the one that is making noise is actually kind of loose. So I'm just wiggling it here and seeing if I can actually get it to come off. Uh, I pull out the flashlight and I'm just going to take a closer look because again, I don't want to break anything. This is a kind of an expensive unit. Um, but it, it does look like, you know, this, this connector is broken and, and someone kind of just shoved it back in place. So I'm just going to try to reef on it here and see if I can pull it out. Boom, there it comes out. Um, you can see, yeah, this has definitely fallen off before and someone's kind of tried to bend it back in a shape and shove it in. Uh, more than likely there is a poor connection between that outside connector and the actual RCA uh, PCB connector. So you know the only logical thing to do is kind of take it apart and see if we can rebuild or repair that connector. It'd be kind of difficult to find a replacement part for this unit since you know it is so old and it's you know kind of a kind of an heirloom piece. Now here nothing special I just decided I take off the the rear panel a uh, whole bunch of screws holding in these individual RCA connectors, just, just super well built and just, you know, completely thought through. Looking closer at the back panel, you can see one other uh, RCA connector is actually missing its, its grounding sheath. Uh, so, you know, it seems like, you know, someone who's been using this has kind of been super aggressive with these rear connectors. So the back panel is coming off pretty easily, but there is a grounding cable here that I just need to remove. Um, not, nothing too crazy about this, just, just something to help uh, you know, reduce noise between the speakers and the, the preamplifier. So um, with that off, it looks like everything's loose and I should be able just to remove this uh, rear panel. And here I'm just going to you know, carefully set it to the side so I don't uh, damage anything. I don't really want to take apart too much of this just in case you know, I screw something up. With, these, uh, with this back panel removed, I do have better access to these terminals, but I still am not able to kind of get them removed or swap them out. So I'm just going to flip the, the preamp over and remove the uh, bottom plate as well. Hopefully this allows me access to the PCBs without me having to you know, completely remove them from the unit. So on the bottom, I'm just gonna remove uh, the few screws I see holding in this base plate. Uh, nothing crazy, just you know, Phillips had screws holding this base plate in. 
Uh, with this off, you can see the bottom side, and you notice there's no components here, which is really smart. It really makes repairing this really easy. Uh, we do get access to these connectors here. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and probe the uh, pins as well as the connectors so I know uh, what is connected to what. I don't want to desolder something that I don't need to remove. Once I was confident with which pins I had to desolder, I went ahead and grabbed some other tools. So the first thing I have is some flux, which will help the solder kind of move around, as well as a solder sucker, which is used to you know suck the molten solder away from the solder joint. I do have this copper desoldering stuff, but this stuff is just absolutely junk. It doesn't work at all. This pen style flux is really convenient and easy to apply, so I really like using it. Um, it kind of works like a paint marker. So I'm applying the flux on the pins that I plan to desolder, and this will just, again, help move the solder when I heat it up. Um, the trick with this solder sucker is to, you know, heat up the solder joint and then uh, place the solder sucker over the solder joint, try to get a nice airtight seal, and then just hit that spring-loaded button, which then, you know, pulls the spring up and, and sucks all the solder out. Uh, so here you can see when I push it back down, little bits of solder are coming out of the tip. Uh, this is pretty standard electronics repair, and it's actually a very convenient tool. So hopefully you noticed by now that I'm actually desoldering uh, the wrong output connectors. My plan here is to actually swap the functioning tape out RCA connectors with the non-functioning uh, pre-out RCA connectors. I don't really have a tape machine and I don't really plan on recording audio coming out of this preamplifier. I just tend to you know, listen to the music that it's, it's producing. Um, so I figured it's a pretty safe bet to replace the uh, connectors that are working with the ones that are not working. With the solder sucker, you tend to usually only suck about 90% of the solder. So here I just kind of heat up the pin and move it out of the way so it comes off completely. Uh, and now with that removed, you can see this, this component uh, there is no part number on this, so you know I wouldn't really know where to get a replacement, which is why I'm swapping them out. So taking a closer look, everything does seem to be you know connected properly, and everything seems to be non-damaged. So you know I do have high hopes for just changing this with the uh, the other connector. I hear same thing as before. I just kind of skipped over it. I used the solder sucker to remove most of the solder, and then I heated up the final pin to get it loose. Um, yeah, with with this connector, you know you can clearly see there is a sheath missing. Um, and I'm just going to take a closer look with the flashlight and see if I can figure out what's actually going on in here. Uh, it, it looks like these outer sheets are actually just connected to the ground pin by a spring contact. So, you know, with my problem where I get noise some of the time uh, when, when the RCA cable is moving, kind of makes sense with this pin or with the sheath not connected properly. I'm going to try to bend this outer sheath just a little bit so that when I shove it back into the RCA connector assembly, it kind of makes forceful contact with the ground pin. You know, if I had realized that this was just the problem before taking this entire thing apart, I probably could have gotten away with just bending this pin and then shoving it back into this connector. But I mean, that would have been no fun at all and it probably would have led to other problems down the line. Uh, once I've gotten that connector bent, I shoved it back into the assembly and it does seem to be making proper contact. Of course, who knows when I add a cable in if it gets you know disconnected or if it gets removed. It's also a little bit surprising that these outer sheets are not just soldered to the uh, ground pins in this assembly. Uh, regardless, you know I, I shove the sheath back in and I'm just going to swap the two outputs. Again, I have no use for this tape output, and I really just want to hear the the sound coming out of the, the pre-out connectors. Here I'm just making sure you know nothing's damaged, and I'm just going to shove them in nice and gently, make sure I don't bend any pins. And once they're you know kind of sitting where they need to be, I'm going to use uh, like a little, little preload here, so a flashlight just underneath the assembly, just to make sure that the uh, connector is completely sitting flat on the PCB. And again, nothing fancy, just you know using soldering iron and, and the solder, and just you know connecting these pins back to where they belong. Um, it is convenient that these two or all of these RCA connectors are all the same. So if I do have problems in the future, I could swap them out or maybe you know figure out what the part number is to repair the entire unit if I do you know, want to use the full functionality of it. With everything soldered in place, I'm just going to go ahead and grab my multimeter and set it to continuity mode and just uh, you know recheck the connections for all of these uh, RCA connectors. I, I don't want to, you know, put this thing back together and then realize, oh, I soldered this incorrectly and it, you know, blows up in, in my face. Uh, so yeah, everything looks fine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and reassemble this unit. It probably would make some sense to test this before assembling or, or reassembling this uh, this box, 
But you know, with these old school preamps, you do tend to deal with high voltage. You, know, you get that nice high voltage sticker on the bottom side. So I'm just gonna put it back together and then turn it on just in case something goes wrong. Again, here I'm just flipping over, making sure I'm doing this nice and gently so I'm not damaging anything and I don't want anything coming loose. And as I reassemble this preamplifier, it is interesting to notice uh, how much stuff is actually crammed into this, uh, this in, into this unit. So all these giant capacitors, all these small capacitors, little resistors, heat sinks. I mean, all of this has been replaced by integrated circuits that are you know smaller than the size of a human hair. Um, and it, it's also more interesting to notice that people are just gravitating back to these older vintage preamplifiers for their you know their warmer tones, their you know natural timbre, and just better projection. And you just you can't really beat that analog sound that you get from you know old preamplifiers with this new modern age um, modern age preamplifiers. They're just a bit too sharp and a bit too harsh, um, which is you know kind of ironic because you are trying to reproduce the sound of music. So with everything reassembled, I'll just go ahead and get my uh, record player set up and, and see if this thing actually works or if, you know, I've just made a big fool of myself. And just like that, everything is working fine.